Hello, this is Sandy with another mini project to build something I actually need around the studio. A decent MIDI merger. Up until now I have used a computer DAW to do any MIDI merging, but it's not always reliable and with this change back into Eurorack modular hardware lately I've become a bit spoiled by the intrinsic reliability of hardware MIDI. This box is a 3x3 MIDI merger and splitter based around an Atmega 2560 and the Arduino ID for quick and easy coding of the software. Each input has channel filters, rerouting, thus redefinition, and distribution to the outputs. There is also a three-way keyboard splitter on each input that can be routed to different outputs for different synths, or just different channels to assign output or outputs. I chose a 2560 for one obvious reason the four hardware UART ports. This is always the main reason because I'm not choosing it for its speed. <laughs> the Arduino IDE, despite its shortfalls, is super fast to write for, but allows finer tuning with more efficient code once more stringent timing requires are to be met. I cheated and used a 100-pin TQFP breakout so I could just hand draw the main PC board instead of designing in the computer and photo etching it. I tried to make the settings easy to navigate, although there is some menu diving. It's only to set up a new configuration. Last week I just wanted a straight standalone MIDI merger, but that's how it starts. I had to pull in the reins before using up too much time on this. I did go all out on the split function though. I'm tired of two-way splits with no options on my keyboards, so this will keep me happy for a while I think. Each input jack can have a unique triple split function with its own low split point and high split point. Each of the three regions can be transposed as well. I'll be mostly sticking with transposing octaves, but all of them can be offset differently. There's instruments for each section that are auto-updated when the first note is played or can be disengaged entirely. Then there's overlapping of regions from 0 to 14 notes, which I really like. The MIDI clock sync can be routed from any inputs to any outputs, but if there's a conflict, then the other input will lose its routing to the same output. I had planned to make this automatic, but for my own use, I don't really need it to be at this time. Entire program change routings can be disabled as well. Some of my synths, I like to manually set the preset, so prefer to block them in that particular routing scenario. MIDI transport messages like play, continue, and stop can be blocked from any input to output connection. This is in case you want to use a MIDI clock for delay or arpeggiation, but don't want it to restart MIDI sequencers already running. Whole channels of MIDI CCs can be blocked in the same way. Again, so settings on a synth, the main level in particular aren't suddenly changed by a MIDI sequencer settings. Most of the time I'll be leaving these alone, but can think of some situations where one would be disabled. There are up to 10 configurations or scenes, as I totally avoid calling them. Each configuration can have a name as a reminder. It's only 16 characters in length, but with acronyms I think that's probably enough. Once back in standby, the name will scroll across the uh, OLED screen. The manual for this is possibly the shortest I've ever written, only six pages. This isn't too bad for an Arduino-based four-day programming exercise. Programming the OLED section is a semi-adaptation of libraries already out there, but in the interest of conserving memory of an Atmega 328 I was originally using for a different project, I ported it into the Eno sketch with necessary modifications. That's how I got such non-standard fonts, unlike the ones you see all over YouTube. I used a font creator called GLCD Font Creator by Microelectronica. It's nice for creating custom icons as well if you still want to use the letter generators for that. 
I'm going to post links to the code and a zip with uh, circuit information, etc. Once I get it debuggered. This could be built on an AppMega 2560 Arduino if you don't mind the size of that. So here's me playing around with my new toy that I so desperately needed for some upcoming uh, demo videos with two of my new modules. Thanks for watching. I'm Sandy Sims.